In the last stream, we were working on getting through the moving on section of the quest book here. We worked to build this rather large contraption, this rather large sequence of machines and pipes, with the end goal being to automate the production of coal, copper, tin, and mini coal to allow us to more easily and quickly make bronze going forward because once we unlock the ability to make a large amount of bronze we can push forward get ourselves a few pulverizers and begin working through the bronze age but right at the end of the last stream we completed the chapter challenge to quest line and as a reward we got a very powerful compression dynamo which we now have over here powering the entirety of our base which is capable of producing 640 redstone flux per tick because it comes pre-equipped with a resonant integral component and three auxiliary reaction chambers which increase the maximum output of the dynamo at the cost of making it less efficient so it does use more fuel than it would otherwise but you get a lot more power from it as well so that is working just fine for us and i think is going to continue to work just fine for us for the foreseeable future the second reward we got here was the jet ski now the pack has updated between streams and so now as an additional quest reward we get two minecraft egg slottles as well and i believe the same is true for the uh, first chapter challenge quest line this also has two new quest rewards in the form of minecraft frogs and these do come inside of mob imprisonment tools which might actually be more valuable than the frogs that are inside of them don't get me wrong that is fantastic that's not a vanilla minecraft mod right that is the first time i have seen a minecraft frog twitch chat is telling me these are a vanilla edition i've not played vanilla minecraft in quite some time but that is fantastic moyang you've done a fantastic job there the way it works and it does its little ribbit that is incredible but the reason why the mob imprisonment tools might be even more powerful is that we can use these going forward to pick up really any mob and move that wherever we want in the world and if we wanted to we could even at some point in the future use the mob imprisonment tool with a mob inside of it in something like a mob duplicator to get a large number of a specific mob usually something like wither skeletons is uh, is a mob that you want to be able to duplicate a large amount of to get a lot of wither skeleton skulls to be able to automatically spawn and kill withers but that is getting quite a bit ahead of ourselves the thing that people are really here to see is this jet ski that we got it's from the endless ocean aquatic adventures mod so i assume we just put this down like a Minecraft boat. And then I would assume that it kind of just acts like a Minecraft boat that's very fast. So I can spin to make the number at the bottom go up. But I actually can't, um, I can't drive it. Okay, so we've kind of got it to work here. If you uh, go to options, controls, keybinds, and then type in endless and click category. What I've done is um, initially the increase speed button here is set to plus. All I did was uh, click plus go to key, and then get rid of the conflict. There was uh, another option that was using the uh, the plus arrow. So I got rid of that, and now if I press plus, it does start moving, and I can press plus a few more times. Here we go. All right, there we go. Okay. And so you can actually go surprisingly quickly. Okay, maybe too quickly. Oh my goodness, it, it, it handles incredibly well. I do want to make sure I don't go too far away from my biz, but this is very fast. I assume that's uh, blocks per second at the bottom there. So we're going at almost 40 blocks per second when we're going at full speed. And then you can press the, the minus to kind of slow down a bit as well. That is very cool. I don't know if we're really going to need to be able to get around the ocean that fast. I guess if we wanted to, we could build some islands that are quite far away and use the jet ski to just get from one island to another. But for the time being, if we slow down to zero, we can dismount and we can leave that on the, uh, on the seafront for the time being. So that's pretty nifty. Let's go ahead and sleep. Between streams, I have been collecting uh, quite a large number of duck eggs. We've got almost 20 of them now in our, uh, in our chest. So if we wanted to, we could probably get even more ducks around on the island here. But um, the good news is that over here, we do now have a ton of specifically tin and copper. And so right out of the gate, if we go ahead and craft these down into raw tin and raw copper, we can begin smelting those into tin and copper ingots and the very first thing that we're going to work on in today's stream is trying to get the pulverizer the pulverizer just requires a ton of bronze some of it in gear form along with yet another flux hammer once we have the pulverizer we then unlock the next tier of resource generation because what we can do is we can take some sand we can place that into the pulverizer that's going to get us even more dust which we could if we wanted to begin rooting around into here this 
has already run into the issue that I thought it would run into in the last stream, and that is that because you can't designate any individual slots in the inventory to specific items, it fills up with whichever items you get the most of. And so because we're not getting the perfect ratios of flint, pebbles, and dust, what's happening here is that the system is now filled up with pebbles and flint. And so now I assume we probably do have some dust hanging around over here. Yeah, we've got almost two stacks of it, but that dust can't make its way into the crafter because there's no space for it. Of course, we can temporarily fix the problem by just taking some dust and placing it in over here. But in the long term, that does mean that this is not going to be a particularly great solution. And so sooner rather than later, we could do with trying to figure out a, um, a better way of producing this poor transformation powder. But for the time being, we are going to work on getting the improved transformation powder, which we craft by using four sand dust, which we can make once we have the pulverizer, with four more pebbles and the previous tier of transformation powder. Once we have that, we can then take that and place it in a barrel with the improved organic fluid. We did see this in the last stream. This is made by putting lava into a fluid barrel with a block of bronze beneath it. So what I think I might do then is temporarily, I'm gonna go ahead and just disconnect this pipe here. We've already got what is probably gonna be more than enough tin and copper to get us through today's stream. And so I do wanna make sure that we have enough poor transformation powder to make a bunch of this improved organic matter to allow us to get a ton of iron, aluminum, and nickel because all three of those are going to be required to uh, complete what is my main objective for today's stream, and that is getting a basic, simple storage network up and running to allow us to no longer have to sift through every single chest and every single storage door we have anytime we want to find any particular item and anytime we want to craft any particular block. Now, our copper and our tin is done. I don't want to start smelting all of the copper or all of the tin just yet. The reason for that is that as soon as we have the pulverizer, we can begin running some of our copper and tin through that to uh, increase our chances of getting even more copper and even more tin. But before we get, again, too ahead of ourselves, let's go ahead and craft up another copper hammer. And let's see if we can't get this pulverizer. So in order to make the bronze gears here, we can go ahead and craft down this uh, block of bronze into more bronze ingots. And we can take the gear working die that we made in the last episode and place that into the uh, multi-servo press. Now I have picked these up because previously they were down over here, but in the last episode, we did move our source of power over to the other side of the island. For now, I'm gonna go ahead and place these down like this just so they can get some semblance of power, but this is definitely not a permanent location. We will move them fairly shortly so that we can uh, you know, more easily access them and just make it look a little bit nicer. But for the time being, we can place a gear working die into the multi-servo press. And then if we place in eight bronze, that should transform that into two bronze gears. While we wait for that to finish, do we have what it takes to craft up a flux hammer? We totally do. We're just missing two wooden hoppers. That is not going to be a problem for us. Again, we can use this recipe right here. So we don't even have to craft any chests at all. Boom, there's our flux hammer. And then I think at that point, all we are missing is a little bit of bronze, which again is three copper and one tin. That's gonna take us up to six bronze in total, which is the perfect amount to make the pulverizer. In here, we have our two bronze gears. And so as soon as this is done, we should finally have everything it takes to make the pulverizer. Boom. And then back over at our crafting station. Boom, nice. So let's go ahead and throw this down again for the time being on this uh, line of energy cables. And so now if we wanted to, we could take, for example, some of our copper or tin, craft that down into raw copper or raw tin, and instead of just smelting it straight away to get 16 copper ingots, if we place it in the pulverizer, there's a chance that we get more copper dust. So by default, putting one raw copper into the pulverizer gets you one copper dust with a, a chance of getting a second copper dust, but that chance is only 25%. So one in four times, you're gonna get a second copper dust, whereas most of the time, you're still just gonna get one copper dust. However, you can increase those odds. It says boostable at the bottom there. The way that you increase those odds is by placing a catalyst into the catalyst slot below the raw copper. There are two optional catalysts in the pack right now. That is flint and basil's powder. Basil's powder is something we do not have access to at the moment, but flint is something that we have a ton of hanging around in our crafter over here. And so if we just go ahead and steal a stack of flint, we can place that into the pulverizer. 
And if you press U on this, you can see in the uh, Catalysts tab that this has a bunch of different modifiers and a bunch of different effects on the way the pulverizer works. So it does make it use more power, uh, and it has a 20% use chance, which means I think that uh, every time you use it, there's a one in five chance that the uh, flint will actually get used up. But that does mean that you don't need one flint for every copper. Um, in fact, you need approximately one flint for every five copper. So if we put this raw copper in, hopefully we should get substantially more than 16 copper dust out. We can then take that copper and smelt it, and we've effectively generated extra copper ingots without having to go through the rigmarole of making even more of the uh, poor transformation powder. You can see already here, we've uh, pulverized four raw copper. We've not used a single piece of flint, and we've managed to get six copper dust from it, which is a pretty nice turnout there. I'm very happy with that. And ideally, going forward, we'd set up a system that allows us to automatically craft these copper pieces into raw ore, have that raw ore pulverized into copper dust, and then have that copper dust uh, smelted into copper ingots and sent to their own respective uh, storage drawer. That is definitely the plan for the future, but for the time being, I do want to press forward and see if we can't get a simple storage network up and running. So to do that, we are going to have to get some sand dust. Now, I think currently we actually don't have any sand lying around because all of the sand that we're generating here is being turned into dust and sifted. And I don't think we just keep any sand lying around in our chests. Really, we've got quite a bit of dust, but yeah, no sand whatsoever. That is completely fine because, of course, we do have a large backlog of cobblestone. We've got our infinity wand and we have the ability to make as many stone hammers as we like. And so real quick, I'm gonna get a couple of stacks of sand and then we'll see about pulverizing those into some of the sand dust so we can make some improved transformation powder. Okay, so a little bit of hammering later. I did eat one of these apples here, these Prudentium apples, which is why we have speed for the next uh, one and a half minutes as well as uh, absorption too. But uh, what we can do now is we can take our sand and place that into the pulverizer here to get the sand dust. And whilst I was hammering all of that uh, cobble to gravel and gravel to sand, people in the Twitch chat did tell me that you can put raw copper into the induction smelter to get copper. But the benefit here is that there's a 50% chance of getting an additional ingot. And so it's probably worth putting the raw copper straight into the induction smelter as opposed to pulverizing it first. I don't believe you get that same benefit if you try and smelt copper dust. Yeah, you don't. You only get the one ingot from one copper dust if you smelt it in the induction smelter. So even with the bonus that you get from the flint, I still don't think it's a 1.5x chance of getting uh, two copper in the pulverizer. And so going forward, it's probably in our best interest to just drop all of our raw copper and raw tin into the induction smelter. And that's going to give us that highest chance of getting extra copper ingots. So once we have a little bit in the way of sand dust, let me put some of the regular dust in here just to keep this whole system chugging along. Let's see then if we can't get some improved transformational powder. It is super easy to make. Let's take some of the 300 poor transformational powder we have, and let's also take a stack of the stone pebbles. Over here, we're going to put the poor transformation powder in the middle, surround that with the stone pebbles, with the sand dust in the corners, and that's going to get us a bunch of this improved transformation powder, and it's going to go ahead and complete the first bronze quest line here. Let's quickly claim all of our rewards, and now what we want to do is craft a thing into improved organic matter. To make that happen, we are going to need a block of bronze. And for that, we're going to have to put yet more copper and yet more tin into the induction smelter. Now, this is the bit that might take a little bit of time. I hope that the transformation from lava to improved organic fluid is pretty quick. I don't know quite how fast it's going to be, but we can try putting a, a block of bronze, maybe like here. And then we can put another one of the stone barrels we have right next to this one and connect that up with our uh, pre-existing fluid pipe system to, uh, to hopefully allow us to make that uh, organic fluid fairly quickly. The question really is just how fast it transforms. And we also might just have to get even more fired crucibles and potentially even more resource generators to keep up with the, uh, with the speed at which we're going to need lava here. But uh, real quick, let's craft that block of bronze. Let's place that down for now, right about here. We'll place the stone barrel on top of it. Boom. That should start filling up. And then once it's full, we'll see just how fast the transformation here is from lava to improved organic fluid. So it's not super fast. Also, the, the name of the fluid at the top there is incredibly long, but it's not super slow either. It could definitely be worse. 
We can then of course take our powder, right click that in, and that's gonna get us the improved organic matter. It's not ideal, it is kind of slow, especially given that uh, we're also getting the lava a little slow as well here. So there are a few things we can do to make this faster. The first thing that we can do is get some more pipe upgrades and use those on the fluid pipes that are connected to our fired crucibles here. That's going to allow us to pull lava out of those crucibles and into this barrel much, much quicker. That's only going to help to a certain extent because we're still not producing lava incredibly quickly, but we can always add more fired crucibles. And of course, now we have a ton of coal, so we can make more blocks of coal. Uh, and so getting more lava really shouldn't be too difficult for us. Let's grab some flint out of here. And I guess ideally we want to make four of these uh, of these pipe upgrades. And there's really not much of a reason to not go kind of to the highest tier. I guess the reason not to go to the highest tier is just to kind of save on flint. But we've got so much flint and these pipe upgrades are so cheap that I feel like we might as well just go straight up to the ultimate pipe upgrade and then place that in over here. This is massive overkill. You'll see right now we're transferring 50 millibuckets every tick, which means we're transferring 50 millibuckets 20 times per second. So 1,000 millibuckets per second. If we add this on here, we're now transferring 10,000 millibuckets every tick. So that's 200,000 millibuckets every second, which is, of course, way more than we are actually producing. It's a, an order of magnitude more than we're actually producing. But uh, still, that should hopefully mean that now when we do this and this, that this fills up really as fast as it physically can, which again is still not particularly fast. But if we go ahead and get some more fired crucibles here and, uh, and try and get our lava production to uh, a significantly faster speed, we can hopefully start making this um, improved organic matter much, much faster because we're probably going to need quite a lot of it to get a decent amount of nickel, iron, and aluminum. Okay, so we've added six more crucibles, three here and three here. We've changed things a little bit, but uh, the idea is still the same. We're still getting the cobblestone from all of these resource generators. I think we are still generating more cobblestone than we're using, which is good. And all of these are starting to back up on lava, which is exactly what we want to see. So now when we use our powder on here, we fill back up on lava incredibly quickly. And as soon as that transforms, we can then right click with the transformation powder and we'll get what it is we're after. And in fact, we could probably take this, of course, one step further and just do something like this and like this. Again, in the longer term, we will set up a full system to automate this in a much more efficient way. But as a proof of concept, if we do this, that should be fully automated because now whenever the lava is transformed, the improved transformation powder will get pulled across. It will transform that into a block of improved organic matter that will then be pulled across into the chest. Nice. So this is like a little automated system we have here. And of course, if we wanted to, we could go ahead and uh, using what should be a fairly decent amount of sand dust over in here, we can make a nice big batch of improved transformation powder and just kind of bulk that chest up so that it's ready to always make more of the uh, organic matter like this now again we do get four more of the improved organic matter from the quest here which is very nice indeed let's see what we get from sifting this we get quite a bit of stuff actually we got uh, some aluminum pieces some iron pieces and some nickel pieces now uh, again hopefully we get more of those we do fantastic as quest rewards you love to see it uh, we can then craft all of these up into raw pieces and uh, by the way uh, there is a shortcut here if you hover over the thing that you want to craft if the thing you're crafting can be crafted in a two by two grid like this you can just hover over it and press k and that will just craft down as many as you can craft automatically just uh, a little quicker than doing it manually um, i did put some of my sand in here temporarily to free up a bit of inventory space because my inventory is very full but uh, let's go and dump the sand for now at least over in one of these chests here along with uh, the the uh, axolotls and i did make some extra fired crucible so we do have a little bit of wiggle room to get even more lava being made if we need it but uh, what we can then do much like with the copper is we can place for example our raw iron into the induction smelter and we should get that 1.5x chance of getting uh, double the number of ingots out of here again we do get extra iron aluminum and nickel as a reward just for having one of each ingot and so we should hopefully get a decent amount of um of stuff here so we did get four iron out of our three there which is not a, a full doubling but is a nice little upgrade nonetheless. Um, it looks like for whatever reason, raw aluminum cannot be smelted in here. I'm not quite sure why that would be the case. Uh, we can pulverize the raw aluminum, I guess, which we might as well go ahead and do because we don't have that much of it. Again, once we get the iron and the nickel, we do get even more iron and even more nickel. And now that we have over six iron, we should be able to start upgrading our current meshes, the flint meshes into 
iron meshes, which are going to further increase our chances of getting even more iron, even more aluminum, and even more nickel in the future as we sift even more of this uh, organic matter. So uh, real quick, once we get this last bit of aluminum, That's the improved matter quest line complete. Fantastic. We get another ultimate pipe upgrade as a reward. Not really as useful as it seems because they're super cheap to make. But now that we have that, let's see about upgrading at least one of these meshes here to an iron mesh. And for the time being, because we don't have that much iron, we really can't make more than one of these. But I think it is going to be worth our while just kind of taking one of these meshes here and, uh, and seeing if we can't use it as kind of the sole mesh that we're going to use to do all of our sifting until we have enough iron to upgrade all of these meshes to uh, to iron meshes, right? So for now, we can do this. We can place down our iron mesh. We can take the 20 improved organic matter we have in our chest, and we can begin sifting this to hopefully get a fairly large amount of nickel, iron, and aluminum. All right, so a little bit of sifting later. We've got quite a lot of iron, nickel, and aluminum pieces. And this is actually coming in quite quickly. I'm very happy with uh, how fast this uh, the system is working, even though the barrel does take a little bit of time to transform the lava. And so now that we have this, we can, of course, uh, once again, craft these down into their, uh, their raw form, and we can begin processing those over in our uh, induction smelter and pulverizer. But I believe we should now be able to start looking towards what we're going to do with simple storage networks. That's this one right here. So to unlock this quest line, we have to first get an Invar Constantan alloy, as you might be able to guess, is a mixture of Invar and Constantan, which is interesting because Invar and Constantan are both already alloys. Invar is a mix between nickel and iron, and then Constantan is a mix between uh, copper and nickel, I believe. It is. So I have just put all of my iron into the smelter, but what we might want to do here is we might want to look at putting a catalyst into the induction smelter. Now, the catalyst in the induction smelter is only good for things that are boostable. So for example, the chance of getting an extra iron ingot is 50%, that is not boostable. However, the chance of getting a nickel nugget as a byproduct of smelting the raw iron is boostable. And so if we put a catalyst into the induction smelter, there's a chance that we can increase the chance of getting that nickel nugget. Now, blaze powder we don't have, cinnabar and cinnabar dust we don't have, Sand we do have. Calcite, I don't think we have, although we might actually have some calcite pebbles lying around in one of these chests here. We totally do, and we can, of course, make more using the uh, resource generator if we wanted to. And so the question is, which one is better here? Calcite has a primary modifier of 2, an auxiliary modifier of 1.5, energy modifier of 1.25, and a use chance of 10, whereas Sand is not quite as good. Its use chance is much higher, and its primary and secondary modifiers are lower. Although, actually, its auxiliary modifier is higher, and I actually don't know, because it's not really um, explained very well, but I don't know if the nickel is an auxiliary modifier. It might be, and so the sand might be a better option. Either way, we do have a lot of sand and not a lot of calcite, and so what I think I might do is drop the sand in the induction salt there and then use that with the raw iron to hopefully increase the amount of nickel that we get as a byproduct here. Chat did also point out that the same is true for the aluminum dust. If we put the aluminum dust in the induction smelter to smelt it into aluminum, this is also boostable. And I believe this is going to be the primary boostable number. So uh, having the, uh, the sand in there when we smelt the aluminum dust in the induction smelter is going to give us a chance to get even more aluminum ingots. So one thing we could do here as well is we could temporarily steal the integral components here from the compression dynamo and place them into the induction smelter that is going to massively increase the uh, the redstone usage but it's also going to make it a fair bit faster as well so now if we were to put something like aluminum dust in here it's going to smelt into aluminum ingots much much quicker and we did get two there we got another one maybe you're going to go to five hey so we are kind of doubling or pseudo doubling our aluminum here which is very nice indeed uh, the reason why i think this is going to be useful for us is just because we need to basically use the induction smelter for everything. Because once we have all of our aluminum smelted, then we need to take our nickel and our iron. And in the induction smelter, we can smelt that into invar. Once we have the invar, we need to take our copper, which is over in here, combine that with some nickel as well to make the constantan. And then we combine the nickel and the constantan again in the induction smelter to make the uh, nickel constantan blend. So let's do two iron and one nickel. That should get us some invar. 
It does. Let's do one copper, and I think it's one nickel to make one constantin. Let me also clear my inventory out just a little bit here because we're carrying around, again, so much stuff that is currently not necessary to be carrying around, and it is really making it a pain in the backside to get anything done. Do we get more of those as a quest reward? We do not, but that's fine. And then it is three Invar and one Constantin. So basically all of the Invar and one Constantin to make four? Yeah, four Invar Constantin alloy. And we do get three more of those as a quest reward. Fantastic. So now that we have the ability to make the Invar Constantin alloy, we should have unlocked the simple storage network quest line. We have. So to get started with this, we need the storage network root. This is the heart of the simple storage network, and it's made by crafting eight Invar Constantin alloy around one chest. Now, unfortunately, Ben has left us one Invar Constantin alloy shot here, and so we are gonna have to make some more, uh, but looking a little ahead, the network cable that we're going to make next requires even more Invar Constantin alloy, the storage inventory, even more Invar Constantin alloy, the storage request table, even more Invar Constantin alloy, and you get the idea. A lot of the stuff here requires Invar Constantin alloy, and so if we're gonna set up a basic simple storage network, which does require that we complete a lot of these quests, we are gonna have to first make a lot more of this Invar Constantin alloy here, which thankfully shouldn't be too difficult. All right, and a little bit more induction smelting later, we have 31 Invar Constantin alloy, which I think should be enough to get us a basic simple storage network. So, as we saw a moment ago, the uh, the first craft here is very easy for us to do. We just need a regular old Minecraft chest, and we need to surround that with Invar Constantin alloy. Nice. We can then make network cable and a storage inventory. So the network cable is super easy. It's six aluminum with two more of this Invar Constantin alloy. We can then make the storage inventory. This is made with two Invar Constantin alloy and six planks. Again, not bad at all. Boom, boom, and boom. Now, this on its own, not super useful. Um, it is somewhat useful, actually. Real quick, let me show you how this works. If we quickly craft a link cable, this allows us to connect our simple storage network to inventories that we have in the world. This is made by crafting a regular Minecraft chest with four cable. We do already have a Minecraft chest and we have more than four cable, one, two, three, four. And thankfully this does get us four link cable to use. So the basic gist of this is you put down the storage network root. Uh, thankfully this mod does not require any power whatsoever. We can then connect up the storage inventory. This could be connected via cable. So you could put down a few cables and then put this wherever you like, or you can just put it directly on to the root itself. This is kind of the controller of the mod. And then we want to put down a link cable that connects the storage controller to one of our chests. Again, you could do something like this and have it connect via a cable. Um, alternatively, you can just go ahead and put the cable down directly next to the network route. And now if we open up the storage inventory, we can see everything that is in this chest in here. And even better, we can actually take things out of here and put things into here, and that will take things out of and put things into this large chest. Now, having that connected to one chest is not particularly useful, but if we take this further and go one, two, three, now if we open this up, we can see all of the items in all of these chests in one location, and even better, we can search through that and pull out exactly the item that we want and put back whatever items we want without having to worry about the organization of all these chests, because in here, we can just set this to sort by amount, and this is how I like to have it. You can also sort it by name or by mod, but sorting by amount and sorting by up arrow means that uh, it shows us the item we have the most of in the top left, and as we scroll down, it shows us the item we have the least of in the bottom right. Super cool stuff, but we can take this one step further. If we uh, break the storage inventory, we can upgrade this to a storage request table. This is done with six more Invar Constantin alloy along with two regular crafting tables. Let's quickly grab those two regular crafting tables and let's craft this up. So two crafting tables, one storage inventory and six alloy gets us the storage request table. This does essentially the same thing as before. It shows us all of the items that we have available to us in all of the link cable connected inventories, but it takes it one step further and that it also incorporates a crafting table into this terminal and even better than that, we can now shift click in recipes from JEI, meaning that we don't even have to bother searching for the specific item that we want. Again, for example, if we want to make a chest, we could just shift click in the chest recipe by clicking the little plus icon right here while holding shift. 
And that's going to pull all of the ingredients required for that recipe out of our chests into this crafting grid. And then we can just craft the thing that we want to, to craft. Super cool stuff. Now we can take this one step further still by getting these storage remotes. These essentially do the same thing as their terminal counterparts, but you can carry them with you and basically access the system remotely. So to make a regular storage remote is a little expensive. It does require that we make another storage network route and another storage inventory, which means we are going to need another eight, nine, 10, 16 in Valken Stanton Alley, and we only have 13. However, we do still have some more iron and we do still have some more nickel. So I think we should be able to get up to 16 fairly quickly here. And then if we wanted to upgrade to the uh, the highest tier remote, that being this one right here, we need an extra six, which I don't think we're quite gonna be able to do. However, in the time it's taken us to do all of this, we have managed to acquire over a stack of improved organic matter. And so what we'll probably end up doing as soon as we make our first remote here is, uh, is just sifting a little bit more. Once we've got some more iron, nickel, and aluminum, we can, of course, use that to make even more of the Constantin Invar alloy, and then use that to complete the final push towards the crafting remote. But uh, real quick, do we have what it takes to make the storage remote? So for the storage remote, we need, and again, we can do this in here now, we need a storage network route, boom. We need a storage inventory, boom. And we need the storage remote. Nice. So now you right click this onto the root. That's going to link it to this network. And now if we open it up near the root, it shows us all of the items that are available inside of it. Again, we can sort by amount. And now there is a, a range limit on this. I'm not quite sure what the maximum range is on this. I think it might be 64 blocks. Let's have a look. If we go a bit further out, we can still access it. We can still access it. We can still access it. So yeah, you get the idea. It is, it has maybe an infinite range. I thought it was 64 blocks, but it looks like we have gone well over 64 blocks and we can still access everything that's in a chest connected to that storage network. And so I don't really think we're gonna have to worry about range at all here. And so let's head back, let's do some more sifting, and then let's see if we can't make the crafting version of the remote. And then after that, we'll also look and see if we can't get some diving gear as well, which I think is going to allow us to finally swim down below Y level 60 without taking any kind of damage. All right, so there's almost a stack of aluminum pieces, nickel pieces, and iron pieces. And so uh, once again, we can go through the whole rigmarole over here of uh, processing the iron. Uh, we can obviously uh, pulverize the aluminum, uh, even though we've already got probably more aluminum than we're going to need. And then uh, we can take obviously the nickel and the iron, make that into invar, make, uh, take even more copper, even more nickel to make even more constantin. That should get us the remainder of the invar constantin alloy fairly quickly. And then from there, the only other quest really that we need to complete before we get onto the next chapter challenge is uh, this right here to craft the, uh, the diving helmet, the air tank, the diving pants, and the flippers. All of these recipes are fairly similar in that they all require uh, kind of glass and waterproof ingots. The waterproof ingots we can make by combining together Invar Constantin alloy and aluminum. Now I did some back of the napkin math with the Twitch chat and I think we need about 41 waterproof ingots to make all of the pieces required to get the full diving suit and then uh, one extra as well to make the nature's compass here. Um, I'm not too sure why we would need the nature's compass. It allows us to look at specific biomes but the pack does say that the, um, the only two biomes available are like ocean and deep ocean right? Oh no, it's changed. The world contains only four biomes. Ben has uh, has uh, has changed this. Ocean, lukewarm ocean, deep, dark, and lush caves. Interesting. Okay, so there might be some new structures or something that we need to go to in uh, in those new updates. That is interesting. Uh, this is done. Let's put the nickel in there as well. Get that processed. The aluminum dust is on its way. Um, also, I do want to get the chapter challenge three quest completed as soon as possible because uh, as a reward for this, we get four more resonant integral components, which is going to allow us to not only replace the one that we stole from our compression dynamo, but it's going to allow us to make all of our thermal expansion machines even faster than they already are. All right, so whilst I was waiting for the nickel to smell, it turns out that over here, we do actually have a backlog in our mob farm chest, but this might be a good thing because all of these gold armor pieces can be transformed into a ton of gold. I feel like this has to be an oversight, but if we put the gold chest plate in here, despite the fact that it's almost broken, we get three gold ingots out of it. Same with this helmet. This helmet is basically garbage, but boom, three gold ingots. So 
we normally don't get gold until a bit further down, I think. Like, the next quest line is going to unlock gold for us. But that's quite a ways away. Like, we've got a whole other process that we have to go through to get to that gold. So I can't imagine this is intentional. And maybe I should just quickly process all of my gold before Ben updates the pack for the next stream. But uh, that is a lot of gold that we should be able to get very, very easily. Either way, um, let's go ahead and see if we can't get uh, a bit more Constantan, a bit more Invar, and therefore a bit more uh, Invar Constantan alloy. All right, so 25 more Invar Constantan alloy later, and I think we might be ready to go here. So can we make the crafting remotes? Uh, maybe is the answer. We need to make another storage request table, which needs another one of the storage inventories. That's fine. Let's make two more regular crafting tables. Let's craft all that together into another storage request table. And then let's use that to make the next tier of remote, like so. We can then right click again on here. And now, no matter where we are in the world, we can right click and access all of the stuff that is in all of our chests instantaneously. Uh, you can also, by the way, put a link cable down onto a draw controller, and that will give your system access to everything that's in all of the drawers that are connected to that draw controller, so long as those drawers are no more than 12 blocks away from the draw controller. And even better than that, the Twitch chat is telling me it also works interdimensionally as well. And so if we do ever end up going through to the nether or through to the end, we should still be able to right click and access all of the stuff that we have connected to our simple storage network via the use of these link cables. So this is a very basic simple storage network. As we progress on here, we will be able to uh, expand it and make it a bit more advanced. There are things like import cables, export cables, filtered link cables, filtered import cables. There's a lot of extra stuff you can do, but this is kind of the bare bones setup. It's a simple network route connected to your inventories using some link cable. Uh, going forward, we're probably gonna wanna upgrade all of our chests to at least iron chests once we get a decent amount more iron, just to compact this down quite a bit. Uh, and then from there, we could even upgrade them to gold chests and at some point diamond chests, which are very large. For now though, Let's see if we can't get this diving suit going. So the waterproof ingot, again, is just aluminum and Invar Constantin alloy. Now, if we needed 40 of the uh, waterproof ingot, that does mean we're going to need 10 Invar Constantin alloy, which we're kind of close to having. We're not quite there yet. Uh, we are going to need a little bit more in the way of Invar and a tiny bit more in the way of Constantin. Combine those together and we get more Invar Constantin alloy, and then we can combine those with the uh, large amount of aluminum ingots that we already have. We might need a tiny bit more aluminum, but that's not gonna be a problem. We've got a bunch of aluminum dust ready to go. Let's quickly check to make sure that we do have some glass. And in fact, I don't even need to go over there to check chat. I can just open up my crafting remote, type in glass. Look at that, we've got 50 glass ready to go. That's not gonna be a problem for us whatsoever. And so, uh, yeah, I don't think any of these recipes are going to be too difficult for us. Let's go ahead and bookmark each one of these. And we can unbookmark some of the other stuff that we have here as well. Once that is done, let's transfer in the aluminum. And then while we wait for that to smelt up, let's see if we can't get this going. So we can make the flippers easy enough. We can make the diving boots. Those are also easy enough. The diving helmet doesn't seem too bad. It needs one diving helmet core and some waterproof ingots. That's also easy enough. The hard part is the air tank because this needs four diving helmet cores, each of which require four of these ingots here. So we can make... By the looks of it, three of these. And unfortunately, they do not stack. That is a pen in the backside. But uh, over here, that's definitely going to be more than enough aluminum. So let's re-put in the Invar Constantin alloy. And once we have the last four here, we can then go ahead and make one more of these diving helmet cores. And then at that point, we just need five more waterproof ingots, which we should have. We do indeed. Fantastic. Boom and boom. And I believe that is all of the pieces required to give us a full diving suit. Now, wearing this on land does give us slowness and mining fatigue, which is less than ideal. I wonder if that still is the case once we uh, once we get lower down. We'll find out in a second. Real quick, just to complete the quest line here, let's go ahead and craft up that nature's compass. And there it is, the diving gear chapter complete. So now, if we go out here, we no longer take damage. We no longer start losing air instantly. We have, by the looks of it, 10 minutes worth of air available to us. And then if we go down below Y level 60, you'll see, by the way, also, as soon as we got in the water, we did lose the slowness and the mining fatigue. So this is definitely only meant to go on when you get underwater. 
but can we get down below Y level 60 is the question. We totally can. Look at that. We're down at Y level 50 in the top right there under the minimap, and everything is fine. There are some ores down here as well, which is interesting, and a structure by the looks of it there, which you might want to investigate at some point in the near future. Um, I'm not quite sure how much stuff is down here that we're going to have to um, have to work with, but I do see quite a few structures like this that could well be worth investigating. I don't know if there are going to be any chests of any kind around here. Ten minutes is quite a large amount of time. Got some coal, some wheat, a buried treasure map. Interesting. Okay. That's fine. There's also some magma blocks there that we could potentially grab later on down the line. But um, I think we'll save the exploring for a future time chat because, um, unfortunately, we are out of time for this episode of Seopolis. So uh, we'll real quick head back up to the surface here. Um, I think we'll probably want to get some kind of armor stand so that we can take the, uh, the swimsuit off when we're not uh, swimming because using it while we're on land here is uh, actually detrimental. So uh, real quick, let me grab the remote. Can we make an armor stand or does this require resources we don't have? We totally can. We just need to get three smooth stone, which we should be able to smell uh, nice and quickly over here in our uh, in our furnace wall. One, two, and three. Once we have that, make sure not to look at the enderman. Let's craft up some smooth stone slabs and boom, there's our armor stand. So if we just place this down, let's say over here, it does look a little odd on the armor stand because the chest plate is just like a tank. So it doesn't look the best, but that is now available whenever we need it to go swimming. And yeah, next time we'll come back and I think we will probably start by trying to complete the uh, third chapter challenge quest line here. It really doesn't seem too difficult. Once again, we need um, a bunch more of the Constantin alloy. We need more iron, aluminum, and nickel, more sand dust, more bronze. We've already got the improved organic matter, a few copper hammers, a few network cable. This is going to be super easy for us to make, and that's going to allow us to get those resonant integral components, which are going to make everything we do much, much faster. And from there, we can begin the under the sea quest line, which might involve us going down under the sea to get certain resources. And uh, that's also going to allow us to start making gold, ender pearls, and silver, which is also going to unlock compact machines by the looks of it, which is very interesting. I'm intrigued to see where that goes. But now, though, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of Seopolis to there.